It's the what if I can pull off a miracle. What if I can become someone that no one thinks I can be? The only way to do anything in life is to first change your mindset. Start telling yourself you can do anything through hard work and dedication. One key word in everything with success is learn how to suffer. You must learn how to suffer. Those who suffer win. To accept our circumstances unconditionally. That's where I call it emotional invincibility. That's where when you get to that point of where you've accepted everything that's ever going to happen to you and you've made peace with it before it even happens. When it happens, you're like, oh, okay, this sucks. Worst thing that I could ever imagine, but I can't change it. So I'm not going to, problems are difficult enough to, to move through and overcome. Why add emotional turmoil to those problems? It doesn't help you get through the problem. In fact, it simply makes it harder, it takes longer, or it prevents you from solving the problem altogether because you're so emotionally engaged in it, you, you can't see you know, the sunshine through the clouds. When I'm saying purpose, I think it's about defining your goals, defining what the life you're trying to build is, and and having a real model for what you're doing. I think asking yourself questions, yourself tough questions. Who am I? What kind of person do I want to be? You know, is this the right thing to do? It, pausing for a second instead of just reacting emotionally all the time is a way to kind of get out of that self-absorbed cycle. Nobody's gonna come to your house and take you off the couch. I mean, and especially today. So until you understand uh, that you are in charge of, uh, you know, your mental aptitude and the way that you're going to handle life and take on the, the, the bumps and bruises, you're not going to eat the What is this? The question is not, are you worthy to reach your goals? The question is, are your goals worthy enough? I believe that everything happens for a reason, but it's 100% our responsibility to choose the reason. Because remember, transformation comes from a distressing dilemma. It comes when our worldview is shaken up. And part of that shake-up has to be to help you see that could it be that you are living a tiny slice of your potential. Life is always giving you a test, trying to give you a way out, trying to give you an excuse not to show up. But guess what? You gotta have the mentality to show up every day of your life. And you know, the most important thing is you like you. So whatever you wanted to hear, say it to yourself, because your mind doesn't even know that it's coming. And it also doesn't care. Your mind doesn't care what you tell it is right or wrong or true or false, or even if it's good or bad, it lets it in. And the familiar, unfamiliar, if praise is unfamiliar, but criticism is familiar, and you, if you're not used to praise, you're rejected, and if you're used to criticism, you'll add it in, because we do what's familiar. If they look at all their successes, where they're happy, or where they've overcome things in life, they realize they dug deep into something. You know, they realize they didn't take no for an answer. If they look at where they are stuck or challenged, they need to reflect and say, at what point in my life did that, that starry-eyed person, where did it go? You know, and what, what took that away? Once you accept that, you'll realize you can get back to where you were or that good moment, but you just have to take a hard look and take inventory. Until you create that change yourself, like, what do you expect to get out of it? You're gonna get zero. Realism is nothing more than a socially acceptable form of pessimism. The people with the most consistent track records of success don't think in terms of what is, they think in terms of what could be. I experience negative emotions, right? 
And the difference is what do you do with that emotion, right? So the emotion isn't the problem. It's what do you do with it? It's not that emotional state that's the biggest problem for most people, myself included. It's what we do with that state and we usually judge it. But don't, don't give it a lot of importance. Don't give that, that temporary emotional state a significant amount of significance, right? Just go, this is temporary, I accept it, you know, whatever. You can make anything familiar or unfamiliar. And my advice to everyone is look at your bad habits and make them unfamiliar. And look at what you want, especially praise, and make it familiar. change the world is to start by changing some tiny thing, right? What matters is, did you make something that stands the test of time and did you keep working at it past when everyone else would have given up and said like, it's on to the next thing or, you know, I'll do this other thing because I can make more money or whatever. Like, you've got to, you've got to stay at it and stay at it and stay at it long past whenever the ego gets bored. You are you. You are who you are, and your vision has to be unique to you. And this is about getting you to think boldly, but not to start the next startup because you want to start the next startup because everybody else is doing it, or become the next best-selling author because everybody else is doing it. It's to figure out what is that unique vision that's emerging from you? What is that life that you want to lead? It's taking a hard, deep look at your inventory of, you know, uh, what in life was the successes, what were your failures, and how did you learn from them? Taking an inventory of where do you want to go, how do you want to proceed? Taking inventory of what is your, you know, your assets right now? Do you have a certain amount of time? Are you somebody that likes to hold you? Do you come in? Do you want to cure somebody's problem? Do people love you? You know, are you willing to work harder than everybody else? Where is, the, where is the empathy you see in the world that's going to need to be changed? So you take him in for all these and you need some real soul searching. And you're at the first step of living a very fruitful life. And that's the lesson for everybody. Is that we can choose to be, consciously choose to be. First you accept that you can't change. And then you go, what emotion would best serve me? And I think more often than not, it's gratitude and happiness for the most part. Or optimism, you know, is an emotion. But we can be the happiest and the most grateful we've ever been while we are going through the most difficult, painful, scary time in our lives. And, it's, and it doesn't, and here's the thing, it just makes it that much easier. It doesn't mean that it doesn't suck, but it means that you're not letting the fact that it sucks completely control your emotional well -being. But every person that's had, a, that's created extraordinary results that change the world, that's become you know, financially free, whatever the result is. They, they established faith that they could do it, the faith was unwavering, and they put forth extraordinary effort until, and the operative word, underline the word, a circle the word until, until they got there. The program in the past, and we need something in writing to program us based on what we want for our future. Now, what life throws at you, it's our responsibility to show up to the Coliseum of life, to prepare for battle. I don't care what you're going through, what life's throwing at you. It's your responsibility to find your new 100%. Take it upon yourself to do that. <laughs>